And I'm so glad I took her advice. Yeah. And we made that pivot at the end of 11, beginning of 12. And in 13 was our first million dollar year and have sent and have grown steadily ever since. Meet Courtney Brown. She's a successful woman, wife, mother of three, and owner and CEO of Sense of Style. Started Sense of Style all the way back in 2007. So I've been doing this thing for 15 years, which is in e-commerce is a long time. <laughs> We've been 100% online since 2011. For Courtney, fashion has always been on the horizon, and the most logical step was to follow what she's always been passionate about. I've loved fashion my entire life. I started Sense of Style because I wanted a creative outlet for my passions outside of motherhood. I was the 10-year-old girl that took her mo money from her grandma to the mall and bought a Blossom-style dress and I had kind of become the, the trusted source among my family and friends for affordable, accessible fashion. And mm -hmm. back in 2007, mm -hmm. no one was really doing that. I saw a place in the market for it and I wanted to create easy, accessible fashion that women felt great in that was also affordable. So hence the name, Sense of Style. For Courtney, getting to know the demographics of her business was one of the most important growth factors of Sense of Style. You have to hear how well informed her knowledge of her customers' demographics is. When you buy from Sense of Style, you're buying from women just like me. Moms, like the people fulfilling packages, are doing it in school hours. Our tagline is look, feel, do good. So when you look good, you feel good, and then can go and do good. And I'm passionate about empowering women to know that they have that within them and they can do that in, in their own lives. We personified the demographic. We call her Kate. She's a mom, probably between 25 and 45. She lives not necessarily on the coast, but in the inside states of America. And she wears a lot of hats. You know, she has a job, she has children. She's educated, but probably not, doesn't have a PhD. She loves pop culture. She's really passionate about her family and making an impact on the world. But mostly she likes fashion, but fashion isn't the first thing that comes to mind. She wants someone to curate it for her so she can put it on, feel great in it, and forget about it and go live her life. Great leaders are always future-oriented and willing to adapt to constantly changing trends and technologies. Courtney's journey is a perfect example of that. You always have to be willing to change and pivot. One of our biggest changes came um, I started, I didn't have a business plan, I didn't have money, yeah. I just started throwing boutiques in people's homes yeah. because that was my easiest way to women. Mm -hmm. And um, it was great, and we did that for four or five years, but I realized what I had created was not scalable. I was really discouraged, and I thought, oh, maybe I just need to shut this whole thing down. And I called my best friend from growing up. She was the affiliate marketing manager for one of the country's biggest coupon frugal living blogs. Mm -hmm. And she said, Courtney, will you consider going online and working with influencer and affiliate marketing? Right. I think you should pivot changed the model. And I'm so glad I took her advice. Yeah. And we made that pivot at the end of 11, beginning of 12. And in 13 was our first million dollar year and have, sent, and have grown steadily ever since. One of our biggest game changers is really relying on other good technology. Um, we put a warehouse management system or a WMS platform into place in 2019. So that scan in, scan out, and from an inventory with as many SKUs as we have and so many like us have, that has taken our accuracy from somewhere in like the 85% to like the 99.97%. We just used to have bins in the warehouse that had the name of the item and you would just, you were relying on your pickers and we would pick 50 orders at a time and put them in Ikea bags, true story, right? right? and then lay them out on the table and then the packers would double check the work and then individually pack orders, right? Yeah. Which worked to a point, but also led to a lot, a lot of errors. Time and accuracy, yeah. right? So leveraging other technologies, right? Yeah. Same, we could apply the same thing when we talk about like a great email platform, mm -hmm. right? We use Clavio, it's fantastic, but having that central place 
and utilizing those softwares has totally helped us grow and expand and really helped us overcome a lot of our challenges. Another challenge for Courtney was on how she managed over her leadership role in growing her business. Let's hear how she overcame such a challenge. So often, <laughs> we're the we're the problem. <laughs> when you start, you wear every single hat, right? Letting go of responsibility and doing less while other people take those things on, that's a struggle in and of itself. Leadership is practice in letting go. As you scale and grow, you have to continually ask yourself, where am I best serving the company? Yeah. <laughs> and what do I not like that I can offload? And for me, doing mindset work, gratitude practices, really doing my own healing and all of that has immensely helped my business. Mm -hmm. I really realized that if I wanted to up-level my company, I needed to up-level myself. I realized that I was coming from a place of fear and scarcity and competition, mm -hmm. which in reality, living from fear and living from scarcity doesn't serve any of us. So I, I did coaching programs, I read books, I still listen to podcasts wow. all, t all the time and ask myself, where am I the one getting in the way? And then the same you can apply to your employees is like if they're willing to grow with you and they're willing to uplevel their own mindsets, that's fantastic. And if they're not, then, then that's okay too and you wish them well into whatever other endeavors they go to. And, and then understanding what am I good at and what am I not good at, which takes some self-reflection. Quick question for you, Courtney. Do you consider yourself and your business successful? Success is self-defined, right? Do I consider myself a success? Absolutely. 15 years in business, being able to provide for my family and so many other families, being able to meet great people and spend time with so many amazing humans. How can that not be considered success? To have all of those things. Do we have more to do? Absolutely. Are there places to improve? Always. So it's a yes and. It gets to be both. I see little effectiveness in looking at anything as failure. It's all learning. Now, do you have a piece of advice or any life lessons that you'd like to share with other young entrepreneurs and new business owners, Courtney? Well, I have two. The first is stop worrying about the competition. There's enough for all. And I spent years worrying about the competition. But here's my best analogy on that. When we worry about the competition, what's she doing? What are they doing? Your energy goes side to side. It's super distracting. Focus your eyes on the horizon, on where you're going, and have an abundance mentality. There's enough room for all of us. You do you. And as a part of you do you is do some work on vision. Why are you doing what you're doing? What's the goals? Where are you headed? Write it out, plan it out. Because when you start growing and you don't have any idea why you're doing it anymore, that's gonna keep your, you focused. And money is not vision. Money is a byproduct of vision. Keep that vision. Don't worry about the noise. And if you feel called to do it, do it. Thank you so much, Courtney. It was such a pleasure having a great talk with you. That was today's success story. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more.